Maps, glorious maps. With the Silence and the Fury update, we're getting three new land battle maps. But are they any good? Good for campaign, good for multiplayer? We shall see. Let us begin with The Lost Vaults. This is a map relating to new dwarf lord Thorek, who is out in the jungles playing with the lizards. So it's got that kind of lustrier jungle feel. There's also some fires around as if something's gone down there. A little bit of a river running through there as well. Surrounded by patches of trees. So a nice looking map encased in cliffside. You've got the lost vault in the background there itself, although I'm not sure how anyone lost that thing. And here's the deployment zones. One side starting on the far hill and the other a little bit in the river. And a little bit on the maybe lower ground ever so slightly. There's various obstacles in the way, piles of rubble, a little kind of cliff edge here, another cliff edge with some trees. So there's lots of little choke point potential that is going to make this map not quite as straightforward as just running towards each other. There are going to be these things you can use to your advantage, or maybe the opponent will try and use. There's a choke point here, a little bit of high ground there you can use. Another one here, kind of here as well with the edge of the map. So a bunch of choke points that one side or both sides could try to make use of. And as for the elevation itself, it's kind of a bit all over the place. It seems a bit higher on the right side here for the yellow deployment zone. It's like you've got a bit of higher ground over here. It does look and feel like you'd be looking down on the enemy a little bit, but there is a few bits of high ground on the way. Got some protection here from some rocks around. Do have this ledgy kind of platform in the middle as well that could be used for some missiles to be raining down fire on and have the protection from that ledge. And starting over here, you start on a little bit of an island, which also has a ledge, but you do start near the water, so it's a bit of a messy area to have to spawn in and to try and set your army up. It's not quite as clear as the other side, so it feels like there's a bit of an advantage to being on that slightly higher ground, looking down on the slightly awkward area around that river. They do get more trees on that side, though, that maybe they could make use of. Let's just take a second to admire the vault itself. Built into the rocks. I guess it kind of looks like maybe they were excavating, so maybe this was buried away. And the old dwarfs mined it out, rock and stone brother, but not a bad map. I haven't played any battles on it yet, so I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play. I feel like it it could be a good one for multiplayer, but I also feel like it could be maybe a little bit too advantaged to one side. But it won't be too bad for the other side, but still, they might have to fight uphill if they're not careful. And if the other side is playing defensive, they can kind of just sit on that slightly higher part of the hill. And then the enemy is going to have to fight uphill. So yeah, could go either way. Depends on the factions, I guess. But I do like these kind of tactical maps with all the kind of obstacles in the middle. And you have to kind of work around them. And it's not just a straightforward running into each other in an open battlefield situation. So looking forward to giving this map a try. Not sure it's going to be much good for 2v2s. Looks like it might be a little bit cramped, but 1v1s probably be all right for. That is the Lost Vaults. Up next, Dread Crossing. A bit of a Nagarondi themed icy map as Oxyotl and Torox both start up in this area roughly in the Vortex campaigns at least. And being a crossing map, there is a big old river running through the center. A lot of it frozen over though, leading to some dark elf looking architecture in the background as of course we are in the Nagarondish area. And both deployment zones start in kind of a clearing in the open. And pretty much the entire map is surrounded by trees. So we start nice open area for one side. Nice open area for the other side, although a little bit in the trees. And they do have a few more trees on this side in front of them here. These could be used for a few cheeky hiding units, which the other side can't really do. Separated by this river running through the center. Getting some Skyrim vibes with this whole deal. Comes out the other end into the ocean. But we have two crossings on this. We've got a nice big crossing over here, which is very wide. It is a bit of a choke point, but it is really quite wide, so it doesn't really turn that much into a choke point. And you also have the other side, which has a smaller point, which is more of a choke point because it's much smaller. But it probably means that if both sides try to flank each other through that smaller choke point, there's going to be a lot of cavalry fights going on there, or maybe some monsters as well. But this bigger choke point doesn't really get as clogged up as you might think, even though it does look maybe a little smaller than it'll actually feel. And there's a bunch of room in the corners as well, so some vanguard deployment fun to be had. And I've played a couple of battles on this map, and it does feel pretty good. It's nice to have that tactical element of the river in the middle to work around, and you have the choke points, but they are really wide, so they don't really feel too much like choke points. And from a multiplayer perspective, it's pretty even overall. One side does start with those extra trees in the front, which might give a slight advantage. You could hide some missiles in there, but I don't think that's too big of a deal. It just means that one side maybe has to do a little bit more scouting ahead than the other before they commit to the attack. But 
I don't think that makes it too unfair, so this should be a good one for multiplayer. Maybe even 2v2s, you can have a nice proper kind of river crossing river battle like the old Total Wars used to have. But maybe the deployment zones are a little bit too small for two armies. Not sure until we get in there and try it. But a nice map, the Dread Crossing. Now for the last map, I am going to give you a spoiler warning because I do believe this next map is the one from the final battle of the Beastmen rework campaign. So if you don't want to see that, turn this video off now. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. See you in the future. But if you don't mind it being a little bit spoiled, then watch on into the heart of the dark, which as we can see, it has some big old kind of beastmen herdstone going on with lava and fire aplenty. So overall set in a dark and gloomy forest, and it even comes complete with its own pit of sarlacc. So you can throw all your unwanted Wookiees in there, but it is a beautifully crafted piece of monument. This looks very cool. Nice colors going on, working with the dark forest. Fire and lava everywhere, and a few spiky fire pits scattered around the map as well. So another one with obstructions in the way, not a clean flat battlefield or anything, but it is a pretty wide map overall. Some spots of trees around to make use of. And obviously this is designed for more of a campaign battle, so the deployment zones are a little bit odd and a little bit off. One is obviously kind of defending the stone and the other starts up on the hill. Attacking the stone is probably the idea. Some nice flaming pools of lava around though. We've got these little pits of fire and spikes in the way. Gonna have to fight around those. So a bunch of choke points, a nice map to look at. Obviously you've got the deployment zone down here. This is gonna be the defending army spot, I would assume. Some nice little bits of the map to look at, but probably not gonna be a fantastic one for multiplayer as it is a little bit too sloped down to one side. So whoever gets that high ground has a pretty big advantage. But of course, like I say, this one is probably more made for campaign anyway, so it's not a big deal. It is a nice one to look at though. It'll be fun to fight the final campaign battles on this. We got these choke points around, probably three or four of them. So again, it could be a bit of a clustery fight, a bit of a blob up if you're facing the AI at least. But if someone comes with a lot of artillery and they get this deployment zone, they're gonna be able to just sit up here and rain down Hellstorm rocket battery fire, cannon fire, mortars, whatever. It's a nice spot to rain down some artillery fire from. So a really nice looking map, a great one for a finale because it is spectacular to look at, which is a bit of a shame as it is a really nice looking map, but it's only going to get a look in in Beastmen campaigns when you get to the end of the campaign just the once. So it is a bit of a shame that these really nice maps don't get seen too often, but in a way that kind of makes them more special, right? So that is the Heart of the Dark, a nice map. You can see there is a little bit of a platform on the right side there, but I don't really see much practical use for it really, so it's mostly going to be just that open ground in front of the Herdstone or whatever that monument is. So there we go. Three new land battle maps for campaign and multiplayer. I think we got one really decent multiplayer map, one not bad potential multiplayer map, and one pretty much campaign only map. So three nice maps, a little something for everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I shall see you in the future.